Here's the situation. Obviously, Dre wanted to talk about Deshaun. You know what I mean? Because really, when you speak, everybody listen. I remember, you know, I'm, you on radio, we on Fox, right? You do radio. Ocho, you play games. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but when you when you sent out that tweet, it's like, holy, Dre right. said something. Legend. So everybody's talking about it, as you know. So, you know, wanted to bring you on because because you always talk about don't give no table, no legs. So that's what I'm trying to address right now. But Dre don't talk. So everybody's like, oh, what the he fact say that on he this? Said he don't talk, the fact that he talk is, oh, shit. Bro, why you don't talk, bro? I do talk. <laughs> <laughs> I have to see, I have to see Dre in the off season to remember what his voice sound like. We had to fight to get a meal, yeah. Wrongfully accused, we had to fight to get a pills. That's why we right to get a deal. He on the team, he gotta eat, you know. Spike the skills, fat. Keep it riding for the fam. You gotta like the we get wheels straight up. But in the past bad, work up in the trash bag. I'll pass a lot to take the test before I pass class. Yeah, and my family needed bread. I had to come correct. That's why I keep airing it out like I just passed gas. There's two people in the NFL that you'd never heard talk. I ain't never heard Dre talk on the field, ever. Right. And Troy Palomalo. Hold up, you forgot about Marvin Harrison. Oh, Marvin don't talk either, that's three. <laughs> don't say shit. Never heard him talk. <laughs> Let me take you here. Y'all remember this? That's when Dre, when he put his hands on Cortland Finnegan. Nah, hey, that's why hey, I wasn't hey, rolling. Hey. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, wait, are we rolling, are we rolling? Yeah, we rolling. <laughs> remember that, because it was like, I what? I didn't want to know what was said. How did, how did he get up under your skin to that? I mean, what can anybody say to that magnitude to make you that man? No, it was just... <laughs> <laughs> it was just a build... It, it, that was like three years' worth of stuff, man. Oh, okay, okay. It built you know up to saying? that yeah, point. Yeah, it built up to that point. It ain't just happened. See, the thing about it, and I'm going to jump in, because we were in the same division, right? <laughs> Cortland, 150 pounds, soaking wet. He talked the to me. Right. So <laughs> when I saw it, I was like, Trey, beat his ass. <laughs> 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 and, and I like Cortland. No, that's Cortland. my guy. I love, I love Cortland. You love Cortland? He ain't yeah, never tried that's my guy. Nah, nah, nah. He You're tried right. me. Nah, nah. He real? feisty. But I love him, though. Yeah. I was like, Cortland, come on, let's not do this he this fight, game. He feisty. That's the type of player he you, was. You got to love those type of guys. No matter what, you look at him. Me, I'm like, this little dude, I laugh. But I really? love the spunkiness and the feisty. You know what I'm saying? But when I saw it, I'm like, oh, shit. I got it. <laughs> Ray, did you, did you warn him? Did you warn him in advance or you just dove on him? If you if you go, you can see it. I was mic'd up that game. <laughs> I told him, I was like, you gonna get yourself in something you don't wanna get into. <laughs> and that what happened. That's what happened. <laughs> that, that 305 jumped out. <laughs> that 305 no, came all the way out. Look, obviously, I mean, damn, you can say we had the king of Miami on, the goat of Miami, D-Wade, a couple shows ago. And now you can really say you're the face the GOAT, the king of Houston, you know, so, I, you know, having you on and talk about what's going on at Houston, both with James Harden leaving, Deshaun and his situation, it's important to hear from you. You know, obviously, Deshaun going through a lot off the field. I'm one of those that, you know, believe we got to let the process play out. Obviously, serious allegations, a serious conversation, but we got to let that play out, you know. But when you speak, people listen. You know what I mean? That's a big thing. You never talk. You might push back and say something different, but you never talk. So when you spoke out, everybody, ESPN, FS1, Bleacher Report, Players Tribune, Uninterrupted, like, Dre spoke. And it really started with a tweet. So I really want to get in your mind and, and what you were thinking about when you sent out that tweet, talking about, like, basically, you know, when, since Dave Easterby came through, things changed. I was actually, it's crazy because me and Kennard, we was actually having lunch when I sent the tweet out. And uh, we was just talking about, you know, the organization as a whole. And there were things I experienced, you know, during my 12 years there. And I think now with the way things are, like, you know, you, you guys having this um, podcast and things like that, we have a platform to be more outspoken. And we didn't have that in the past, right. you know what I'm saying? So I just didn't want to see Deshaun go through what I went through, you know what I'm saying, with the organization. He's a tremendous talent. We all know what he can do on the field. He's a winner, you know what I'm saying? We seen that in him when he was at Clemson. Right. I just didn't want 
his career to be wasted. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the since and since Jack has walked in that building, nothing good has happened in that building. And it started with the D D hop trade. You know what I'm saying? So that's that was just me. I think it was just a build up of frustration and things that I seen. And then I worked with the team for a season. What was me, your position with the team? I was an advisor to the head coach and GM. And me being there and being inside the organization, people ask me why I left. I always said I wanted to spend more time with my daughter and stuff like that. But I left because I knew the organization wasn't right. Wow. When you say your organization isn't right, do you mean the ability to build a winning team, Super Bowl, you know, want to be a Super well, you, Bowl contender? Like you, you, you have a guy that comes in who's a team chaplain, basically, or a character coach. And I give him credit. He's good at that. That's what he's good at. But you have a guy basically running your organization and don't know nothing about football. Right. So why would I want to be a part of something like that? You know what I'm saying? Like when we, you know, all of us played, when we lace our cleats up, like we giving it everything we got. And, that, and it was the same. I know guys are doing the same thing, you know, even though. I'm not playing anymore, but there's guys in that locker room that's giving it all to that organization. But I feel like you're cheating them because you don't have somebody in there that's, you're not making the right decisions to, be, to build a winner. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I put the tweet out. That's why I stepped away from the organization. I haven't been in that facility since I left. But did you know when you put that tweet out that it was going to make the waves that it did do you know the power of your voice? To be honest, I didn't think it was going to be, you know, do what it did. You know what I'm saying? Um, I had conversations with Kanar, several conversations, and I'm like, man, I feel like I just need to say something. You know what I'm saying? And he kept telling me, no, nah, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And then we were sitting at lunch, and I'm like, bro, like, I just got to say something. And he was like, go for it. Yeah, I, I think he was right. You know, I think when... One, based on look, just looking at your career, right? You always button your chin strap, came to work. You, you retired 11th all time, all time. Top uh, uh, receivers in the history of the game. We got 23 and 36 right here, all time, right? You retired 11th. You were in a franchise, young organization, uh, undoubt, you know, undoubt, undoubt, Undoubtedly. Undoubtedly. Doubtedly. Undoubtedly. Me. Undoubtedly. 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 Yeah, Andre. Yeah, now the show start right now. <laughs> Undoubtedly. Yeah. I doubt it. There's too many bees. Undoubtedly. What is it? What is it, Chan? Because I'm, I'm with you, bro. Hey, listen. Undoubtedly. I ain't, listen, I ain't afraid on national television to say I'm with you. You know what I'm saying? I'll chop something what? up. Turn I can't on FS1 every morning. So I'm going to chop something up. I just, I just had a little... What is it? Undoubt Undoubtedly. Undoubtedly. Say it smooth, too. Don't say it weird. I got it. Undoubtedly. Oh, that was sexy. I love it. <laughs> Hands down. I'm going to say it my way. Hands down, you're the best offensive player the Texans have ever seen. Right? Best player you're ever best on both player. sides. It's between yourself and J.J. Watt. You know, you know where my vote's going, but that's another story. Um, J.J. Watt was a dog, is a dog. He is a dog. I'm not taking anything away. But when you speak, it, it, it speaks volume. It's going to travel, right? Because you never say anything, so it holds its weight. And I think for you to interject and try and protect someone that comes from demographics like you, who potentially has gone through the same things that you've gone through, I think it holds its weight. Nothing you said was wrong, right? I think it was uh, uh, valid. And I think that uh, you open a lot of eyes. And, and that's what the story end up being. Deshaun is going through, you know, what he's going through in terms of he feels that he needs to be in a better organization that wants to listen to the quarterback position. Because most teams in the NFL, that's what they do. Right. They listen to their quarterback, and they're going to make moves according to what their quarterback thinks. And for you to voice that opinion and support him, I had nothing, I had nothing wrong with it. I thought it was perfect. I thought being that you were uh, coming off being the best player in that team's uh, uh, history, that franchise's history, I thought it was right on time. And guys respect you for that, and I respect you for that. 
So never hold back, right? And, and continue to speak your mind. Um, Deshaun, he, he's a dog. The best is yet to come for him. He's going to continue to play well and continue to support him. Right. I mean, that's all I got to say about it. Yeah, he's, uh, I mean, being on the staff that year I worked with the team, just to watch him play is, is, is crazy, man. Like, the dude is, uh, he's a winner. Right. Like, he, and he does things that you can't coach. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we was playing in London, and, bro, he had a play where he had, like, a guy on him. He was spinning around, and he just took the ball and just flipped it to the running back. Mm -hmm. And when it happened, I was standing by Romeo Cornell, our defensive coordinator at the time, and he was like, you can't cover that. Correct. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he does things that, that, that are truly amazing. And people don't even realize he led the league in passing yards. He almost threw for 5,000 yards, and they only won, what, two games, three games? Yeah. You know, this year. So you don't see that. I, right. just, I just mentioned you, 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 you finished 11th all time. Right. Right, on the receivers list. Gang of great receivers, right? Did you ever have, and I'm throw, throwing you on the bus a little bit, did you ever have a quarterback as good as Deshaun? No. I say it because you already came out, B talked about the, you were talking about the organization, how you said, I believe, wait, like they'll waste players. Right. Do you ever look back in hindsight's 2020? When you look at your career, hindsight's 2020, all the time. If I was in the Patriots, I'd have won four Super Bowls. If they had drafted me, the Dolphins drafted me. Do you ever look back and think about when you were up for contracts? I should have left this organization. I, I, I do feel that way at times. But what made me stick it out was I remember my first Pro Bowl I went to. And, you know, at the Pro Bowl, they, you know, they call you up in alphabetical order with, to take your team picture. I was the only guy there from the Texans. So they was like, they called the teams and they was like, Houston's up next. So somebody, I don't know who the guy was. He was one of the workers in the NFL or whatever. He leaned over to somebody and said, who the hell is here from the Houston Texans? You know what I'm saying? So that just always stuck with me. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to put this organization on the map. Well, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to be the guy that show people, like, who the Houston Texans are or what the Houston Texans represent. You know what I'm saying? And I, want, that's, I think that's what made me stick it out. But who'd you play with? I know, because we talked about it earlier. I was telling you all. Nobody. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Bro, nobody. Who was it? Matt Schaub, David Carr. No, no. When you saw the schedule, you was like, when, when? Nah, because they would beat our ass. So what but you know? none, that's what I'm saying. They had the defense was okay. When you look at the offense, it was Dre. That's it. I'm like, can we double this man and get a 15, win and get out of here? 15. Dre, Dre stole my soul in the red zone it twice in one game. I told him, what, what you call what they call it? The jerk, jerk routes. Jerk route on the mic. Yeah. Bro, Dre would come in there and that trips bunch, and it's me and him. Dot 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 view <laughs> touchdown. <laughs> dot 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 view <laughs> touchdown. He stole my soul twice. In one game. Twice a year for me, for years. I got to figure out, like, all right, this this my dog. You know, we chopping it up. It's a mutual respect. I love him because of where he come from. And you know what I'm saying? Five years after me, it's just respect. I love what he was doing. And then he catching the f game with the touchdowns and doing some I'm like, what the f Dre? God <laughs> damn. And then you come know, up to you. the bright spot. Good game. That deep bird. I have to. I got to show him love. <laughs> So I'm like, man, <laughs> but that's for years and years and years. So for him not to get the just do that he deserves from that organization, much like a lot of organizations around the NFL, it happens. I think it's just a crime in itself. So when he spoke on that other situation, the weight that he carried was just. Yeah, I facts. think it was just. But, but Fred, you said you 11 on the list. Dog, Hall of Fame, we all, yeah, you that dude. You could have been seventh or fifth or third if you was with a real quarterback, a real organization. Like, does that get to you? No, nah, I just feel like you got to play the hand you dealt. Boom. You know what I'm saying? Like, That's it. It's crazy because when I ran track in college, we had some um, girls from Houston that ran track also. And they was always play that chopped and screwed music. I always used to be like, what in the hell is that? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So Paul Wall and them. Yeah, so I used to always just be like, I don't want to go to Houston. 
I used to always say that. Like I was like, I hope they don't draft me. I hope they don't draft me. And they had, I don't know if you remember, they used to have a commercial with uh David Carr with no offensive line. Yeah. When Jabbar was out yeah, there. Yeah, so I was just like, man, I don't wanna go there, but I ended up there, you know. And <laughs> it, it it you know, and when I got there, uh, like I said, I just I just took it as a challenge, man. I knew we were a new organization. You know, I knew it was going to be rough times, and I just rolled with it. But Houston embraced you. Yeah, most You got definitely. your own day, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You they, got Dre yeah, yeah, I got a day. I got a day there. Um, he run Houston. You know, they put me in the ring of honor, right. you know, and stuff like that. So they embraced me like the city is awesome, man. Right. Great city, great people. Um, build a lot of great relationships. So Russell Wilson out there, what's going to happen with Russell Wilson? Then obviously you got Deshaun. Um, in his situation, um, but I do think there's a bigger conversation surrounding this organization. So what's next for this organization? You know what I mean? Like you love this organization. You keep right. talking about it. Right. What's next? How do they get back on track? Because as a player, there's a couple organizations that I look at. If I'm if I'm still playing, I'm in free agency. I'm like cross that out. I ain't going there. The so McNair, what's next? The McNairs. McNair was the owner that said, "Don't let the inmates run the asylum." And all that stuff. Yeah. Like there is that there's a racial, you know, back tone to the owners of Houston. So yeah, that that's a thing that players nowadays, like you're saying, with the voice right. and dudes really being, you know, woke to what's going on, that would look at Houston and be like, nah, Chief, there's 31 other teams. And the funny thing about it is 31 other teams, and there's a multitude of teams and owners or franchises that operate the same way the Texans do. That's right. You're not the That's only right. ones. Right. How many That's you can right. count on one hand? How many teams legitimately have a chance at building a Super Bowl team and being consistent year in and year out and making the playoffs? Yeah, four or five. Chiefs. Now Six. Patriots. Okay. Bill spent that stimmy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Bill what? That stimmy. <laughs> Patriots. Steelers. It's the same reoccurring teams year in and year out for a reason. It's only a handful. It's only a handful. Four to five. That's they it. have to want it. It start way up there. They have to want that. Shit from but now, as players, and this is why, like, this conversation is important because, like you said earlier, we never had a platform to really. T First of all, even if we had the platform when we got in the league, we wouldn't have used it. Players back then, it's don't rock the boat, don't be a distraction to the team, don't say anything. The last couple years, I would even say maybe the last two. Three years, football players are starting to say, nah, let me start really showing who I am on social media. You were the first to really do that. The only one to do that back in the day. And then also, like, where do I stand on these issues? So I think things, well, let's not think, things change. So with, to your point, bro, at, like us now, we're, we're, we're asking, and it's not just athletes. I think it's us as, like, people. Where do these companies stand on these topics you know corporation like where do we want to know and it's all the hot topics lgbtq community uh racial injustice do you believe in diversity and inclusion etc 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 so i think times is changing they are but regardless of how boisterous we are or what we say no matter how much we rant Remember these organizations are who they're ran by. They're ran by billionaires that have one bottom line at the end of the day. Yeah. And that's what? Profit. They want to make money. So with, with that, with, with that and, and, and going back to the Texans, Dre, um, <clears throat> with the most recent move the Texans made when deciding to, to, allow, to not resign J.J. Watt, right. right? Have they decided to, to rebuild by allowing J.J. Watt to, to go to Arizona? Like, what, what's your mindset? What do you think their mindset was with that move? Didn't J.J. Watt speak out yes. against the organization? Yes. Didn't I'm he say sure. something? He said, uh, he said something, I'm didn't he? Sure, no. Yeah, what he, said, what he said was, he basically, he went on a, I'm going to call it He went rant, on a rant. Every time, he went uh, on a rant after yeah, the Yeah, but, I, you know, I, I want to say rant because when we speak up, they always say, oh, it's a rant, rant, rant. Well, why can't I just speak my mind, Right. He just, he was speaking his mind, but I'm going to call it a rant. Get J.J. went on the rant. Get your J. words J. out there. Yeah, right, right. J.J. was basically like, you know, if you don't come to work and you're trying to win and you're not trying to do this, then you shouldn't be here. So he went on a J.J. Watt rant. I think it's so much around this organization. So I think, 
you know, now because of how 2020 played out, now we're all having these conversations about, you know, where do we stand on these different topics? Um, where does the organization stand? So I think there's a lot to this organization and I don't think they're in a good place. And I think players like Deshaun, JJ Watt, you know, now taking ownership on the, in their own legacy and saying, you know what? I'm better off somewhere else. That's what I believe. You need guys like that. Yeah, you do. You need but it's guys only like certain guys that can pull that shit off. Now you get just anybody come out there and start talking, your ass ain't gonna have no job. <laughs> Bingo. Bingo. Famous. It's true because a lot of people don't know this. Like I uh I think it was 2009, 2010. We had went like 11 and 5. And I asked for a trade. You know, after us, you know, going 11 and 5, we lost to the Patriots in the playoffs. I went to the owner, I went to the GM, and I went to the head coach, and I was just, I, I, I met with all three of them at different times, and I told them, like, man, like, basically, like, we top heavy. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's me, Arian, on offense, OD. Other than that, you really ain't have too much. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, let me get out of here. Like, let me go somewhere where I can at least try to win me a Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? And they told me straight up, they was like, no, you ain't going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, just like Because at the end of the day, they got all the power. You know what I'm saying? I'm locked in. So they was like, you ain't going nowhere. So the next year we go 2-14. and 14. So of course they're going to make you feel like you don't know what you're talking about because you, you're the player. Evidently, it's something I see. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. And, and that's the, yeah, I saw it before it happened. And I think that's the thing, like, because we're players, they don't like to listen or they feel less of a person sometimes because we may come at them with something that we may see or we may know. And it's not, it doesn't hurt to listen. You know what I'm saying? And I don't think they listen. But that's, that's where egos get involved. Well, yeah, so now let's take Deshaun, you take Russell Wilson, you take Aaron Rodgers. All these, right now there's like a shift, it feels like a shift in, like it's a power struggle. Okay, so there's the, this power. The, no, there's but this the power, NFL players. There's this power struggle. Are acting and so more what's like your thoughts? NBA what's your players? thoughts? That's what's going on. The NFL players, the NBA players, and you, you brought up Houston, so with James Harden. Right. Where James is like, I don't want to be here. Y'all aren't going to win. You're not going to be successful. This organization, and we saw what Houston did. We saw how the Houston ownership group, with the, when, when the whole China thing happened, and they were talking about Like, you know, and you knew. You just said you asked for a trade. Like, right. you knew. And then they told you you can't. Deshaun's the same way. Deshaun's right there. Deshaun's telling you want to go, and they're telling him we're not going to let you go. And Deshaun's saying, "No, I do not want to play for y'all. I, think I can see this as a. I can see this as flawed. If you see a flaw, you said you saw a flaw. So if you see a flaw, why can you not get out of that flaw, that flawed situation? Well, I think the thing, if if you look at it, is that with basketball, players run the league. Mm. In football, the owners run everything. They have, in basketball, they have guaranteed contracts. And that's we just get guaranteed money. Once the guaranteed money gone, they can cut us whenever they want to. Right. But I, you, the thing I hate is you always hear fans say, well, you signed a contract. But they could cut me before the contract over with. No problem. They could cut me before the contract over with and not lose any sleep about it. But they're t like, I, I, I seen someone say that about Deshaun. Well, why he signed a contract? As football players, we have to secure ourselves and get as much money as we can get when we can get it. Because only, you're only going to get it for a certain amount of time. Like, we all know that. We've been there. So you're only going to get it for a certain amount of time, and that's what he did. If they put $150 million on the table for me, I'm going to sign it too. I don't care if they 2 and 14 or whatever. I'm going to sign that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I'm still going to speak my mind on what I feel. If I see, Like you said, if I see the flaw, I'm going to say something about it. So do you do you think do you think things are shifting like this whole con everything's shifting in the NFL like I said NBA you're right 100% the players they run it NFL for the very first time like dudes are standing up saying nah uh-uh like we need to have this conversation Wait 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 do you be careful Go ahead be careful don't fool the NFL players that are doing the standing up. Remember, these are franchise players right. that right. are doing it, not just anybody. You got to have your power, right. your leverage so, to pull that. So now you're talking about the quarterbacks. That's who's really doing it. That's the only people that can get away with doing it. Well, Jalen Ramsey did it. 
Jalen Ramsey. You but it, you, 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 like he said, it, you gotta be, you gotta be a certain type of player in order to do that. Right. Like, ain't, ain't just know anybody forcing their way. But, around. but do you think that now things are going to change because those power positions are doing it? It really, they, it really never been this tense in the NFL when it comes to power. So I, I guess my question is this: Do you think these players? Power positions, quarterbacks, and a handful of other, you know, top skill positions, they're going to shift this whole dynamic between players actually sitting at the table and, and owning their legacy and owning, you know, their career. Not just sitting here and saying, you know what? Oh, yeah, I'm a Houston Texan. I'm a Cincinnati Bengal. I'm going to sit here and make the, the team and the organization, the city, you know, amazing. You're not going to bully these organizations. You're not going to bully use these bully tactics with these owners. In a minute, they're going to find a way to get your ass back in line. I'm, I'm, I'm just so we'll never be like the NBA. So the NFL will never be like the NBA. Yeah, NBA did it. Who? The NBA they did They run the f league. The NBA players run the, they run the league. So why can't the NFL player, and it's going to be the top-notch guy. It's going to be the Jalen Ramsey. It's Yo, going come to be a on, man. It's going, it's going to be a 30 million As smart guy. as you are, you know that's not going to happen. But why? That's what I want to know. Why, why can't, but why can't, though? You know it's not going to happen. What do you mean, why? Who got the balls to stand up to these motherfuckers? It, it's not that. The, the, re the reason why. Wait, let me, let me screw you got to start with the NFLPA. Start with DeMar Smith. These guys do not have the best interests of the players. In the NBA, oh, you got CP3, who's running their player union. They dictate what the contracts are going to look like going forward. They understand the TV deal, the money that's coming in, and what the contracts going forward are going to look like. In the NFL, you got a guy like Demar Smith, who's been a puppet to these owners. Let me tell you, right? Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. Read the article. It's a big article on him. He hasn't done a f thing. Yeah, but does that mean a puppet, though? I push back there. He's been a puppet. I push back there. That's your opinion. I have mine. I have mine. Even when we had the lockout. In 2011, it's that's exactly fluff. where I was going to go. It's fluff, it's fluff, it's fluff. Yeah, it's like, I feel real. like... It's bull. Through this whole thing where you know you're putting money in for the guys who are not making enough money and all this. It's bullshit. Like, and, and I agree with you. I agree with you a when lot man, because what we say at the beginning of the show when Dre speak, listen. Why you keep cutting off and keep saying? Because Dre you finna say it's bullshit. Well, let Dre go there. You keep cutting it Dre is. off the I'm man good. speaking. Y'all done ran freaky hot. Yeah, yeah, freaky. <laughs> nah, nah, I do. I feel like it's BS because we went through this whole lockout and it was. I felt like the deal that they gave us was bullshit. Mm hmm You know what I'm saying? Like, as players, we don't. Guys don't do well with with their money as they're supposed to, you know, because the money's coming in. It's always coming in, you know what I'm saying? And then there's there comes a point where it's cut off. Like, you when you think about it, you only play 16 games. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the at the at the end of the season, if you're not in the playoffs, you ain't making no more money. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I think guys wasn't prepared. The owners know we're not prepared. But that, see, 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 y'all not, you're not staying with me. Listen you're to not, me. I'm going to tell you why. Okay, go ahead. But you're not staying with me, Let me give you a small me, example. Yeah. Dre went to 2011. Wait a minute. Listen, go ahead, go ahead, hurry up. We have a f problem in the NFL getting minority coaches in power positions right. to head organizations. Okay. And you mean to tell me, you asking me why in the f they not going to give mother players the f power to call shots. Right. And we can't even get coaches jobs. Okay. That's not okay. Look where we're going. Can I go? Can I go? Because what did I ask? I said, is there going to be, we're in this movement right now where we the power We can't get shift. guaranteed contracts. And you where did Dre go? Where did Dre go? Where did Dre go? Let me finish. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Why do the NBA players run the f show? Them contracts guaranteed what? contracts. They, what, them, they get what? They get guaranteed Guaranteed. Contracts. guaranteed. What power you got? What's the only power you have if you are on the NFL team? being the franchise in the face of that organization. The reason that mother train is going, if you ain't like that, if you ain't built like that, right. you have no power or okay, leverage. Okay, so the NBA PA, who runs the NBA PA? Players. Players, but who, what players? 
Or are we talking about LeBron James Jeez. is at the table. Kobe Bryant was at the table. Uh, CB3 was at the table. And what's the Go difference? Go back to 2011. See, y'all not staying with me right now. I, hey, come on, I'm, I'm with you. I know right where you're going. You, you know where I'm going. 2011, Dre took it back there. 2011, what happened? We was locked out. They gave Drew Brees money. Ah! Ah! Now we talking. Now we talking. Now we talking. So when we was at the table, you because what you talking about, you talking about power and the positions. You got to be a franchise player. Where was Tom Brady? Where was Peyton Manning? Drew Brees walking out. We're walking down Park Avenue. With the bag. He walking down Park Avenue. We, we union. We're together. He was the only power position there, but we paid him a million dollars. So now you got Russell Wilson stepping up. You got these quarterbacks, these pop, J.J. Watts of the world, the Jalen Ramseys of the world, finally saying something. So that's why I started this conversation about is there a shift in having this conversation? Because I truly believe you're right, but it has to take those guys, and then it's going to be a trickle-down effect. You get, you get your ass out of line with these people, they're going to find a way to whip you back in it. Well, you, uh, I, that's like what me and you was talking about earlier when we was in Arizona mm. at the Super Bowl. And that's when you went through your thing with oh, Cincinnati. Oh, I tried that trade. Yeah. Man, his exact words. His, <laughs> his exact words. I, I want to trade. Trade what? Man, yeah. I coming off a 1,400-yard season. Yeah. I'm mad because we, we were losing, losing the season. Right. I won out. You won out. I ain't budge. Ask me how many yards I had the next season. How many you had? 590. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Chef. 590. Was anything, wasn't nothing wrong with me. Yeah, but what you said was real. You was like, you told me, you said, Dre, if I ever try something like this again, slap me in the back of my head. He was like, you would never win against you the weak. organization. You weak. You weak. You weak. You weak. You weak. That's what it is. Ocho Cinco. You mean to tell me you couldn't get out of Cincinnati? You talking about, oh, Dre, 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 if I try this again, slap me in the back of my head. Because they just let me know who run the show. Oh, my goodness. That's the problem. So you talking about the NBA versus the NFL? Why is you in Denver crying because top stand when you get your contract? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> you try. <laughs> talking about my ankle? When you talking about his ankle? Checking the ball in practice. <laughs> Man, don't get me started. Out. You stayed in Cincinnati. Yeah, you had to throw a pit. You had to cry right, and do a pit right. party. Right, but, but 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 here's the deal with all these with all these people, whether um, Deshaun, Russell Wilson. Sorry, Chef, but this is getting juicy right now because I need to get. I want to get your opinion here too. You know what someone asked What's me? This? Someone asked me on TV. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the number three from uh, McDonald's. How is it? Ooh, big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like a quarter pounder. Good, man. What is here? Lamb chops. Like lamb, like real lamb? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like Mary had a little lamb. I know this is good, bro. We got a question for Chef? I ain't got no questions. I'm about to eat the hell out of this shit. Chef, what we got right here? <laughs> they have rosemary roasted lamb chops with lemon potatoes and spinach. Yeah. Well, everyone has lemon potatoes and spinach. On video. You have escovitch fish, lemon potatoes and spinach. Fred has prawns with lemon. Who? The scrimps. Yeah. Scrimps. Oh, like a fancy way of saying shrimp? Basically. <laughs> Prawns. Fred salt. <laughs> because he doesn't eat lamb like you. Who don't eat lamb? Fred don't eat lamb. Fred don't even know. He didn't even know what a lamb looked like. You don't eat lamb? And he doesn't eat fish. So, so Chef, we talking about this whole thing, right? We, wow. we getting, it's a heated discussion talking about power, power, power in numbers. If everybody come together, do you think right now there's a, a shift in sports and, and, and corporate America where people are coming together and saying, if we stick together, we're powerful. You know what I'm saying? Because Ocho don't think that there's going to be a shift in the NFL. NBA, these dudes, they run everything. Why do you keep comparing us to NBA players? See what I'm saying? So what, tell me about power in numbers. Well, I think that collect collectively, if you do come together, that there should be power in numbers. You don't think there's power there's in numbers? There's 53 people on Always. a roster with different contracts. It's, it's tiers, right? Different tiers. Certain people ain't got the mother time or can't afford to be sitting out when it's time for them checks to roll in. Everybody can't pull the shit off that the guys at the top can do. The NBA is different because the 
and money's guaranteed. Oh, we don't want to play? Cool, them checks still coming in. Gotcha. We don't have the leverage to pull that shit off LeBron or CP3 or James Harden are doing. And the NFL owners, they realize and they understand that. They know who has the power why. and they never gonna give us a leverage. But chef, here's the deal. Remember we had Mike Vick on the show, you was like, Mike Vick who, whatever. We never had the Mike Vicks of the world, the Peyton Mannings of the world sitting at the table, you know, really pushing the owners, really pushing these teams. So that's why I believe there's a shift happening. Do you think that it's gonna happen now? 100%, I, I'm, I'm on the other end of the spectrum from him. I truly Why? believe. Why? Because for the very first time, for the very first time, we're we're having those dudes that Ocho's talking about. You only name two people. That's all we need. That's where it starts. That's where thirty starts. other I'm teams with quarterbacks. At, I'm looking at the. I'm looking at 2020. I'm looking at 2020 where where all these athletes is now standing up saying, you know what? I got a platform. You know, I got a voice, and they got to listen to me. Yes, the Russell Wilsons of the world. Even Matt, what Matthew Stafford did, and Aaron Rodgers is doing, and, you know, Deshaun Watson, J.J. Watt, Jalen Ramsey, all these dudes is finally saying, forget that. The NFL finally, for the very first time, said, you know what, we got to get behind some of these causes. Why? Because of this video. And then there's a lot of, well, who was behind the video, et cetera, et cetera. But you had the faces of the NFL from OBJ, OBJ to Juice Landry and everybody else from a skill position saying, what if it was me? And that's why I think things but are going to change. But that's the NFL saving his ass. That's not the NFL saying we're going to pay these guys how they should be paid. At the, well, at, the, at the very end of the day, right? Money's different. Money is different. The NFL just signed a 10-year, $118 billion contract. What is the salary cap doing next year? Going where? It's going up. 350 to 400 million. So it's going to double. Yeah. Right? It's going to double? It's gonna. Mine ain't gonna double, Fred. All right, one, one and a half. Hey, hey, Dre, Dre, his numbers is flicked. There, he talking about going double. So we go from one eighty to three. What's the salary cap now? It's one eighty. It's about one eighty. One eighty. It went down this year. So what? What I do in my spare time when y'all you running a business? Okay, go ahead. Ocho doing Ocho. I'm scamming. You 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 down here doing Channing things. And I'm talking to. I'm fishing and making babies. I, I've spoken to people who've broken these numbers down. The salary cap, there's no reason for it not to be $350 million soon. Soon? When it, when it but you said next no, year. No, no, when Fred. the deal kicks in. When the deal kicks in, there's no reason. It depends on how, how fast they want to move it. So quarterbacks will see $60 million a year. And all the other players that get their just due. Oh, yeah, but that's that's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a process there. There's a process. Why do you think the Kansas be... City Chiefs hurry up and sign uh, uh, Mahomes? They don't want to just give him $400 million. They knew this deal was on the table. They ain't giving you money just to give you money. You of know course, that. Of course, of course. You know that. Of course. I, I just, so, Fred, I, I, everything you're saying is right. I'm just telling you million your numbers to years. double the next year. That's the only thing I push back on you. It's not going to go from 180 <laughs> to 350, 360. That's it. Two, That's two it. or three years, whenever it kicks in. Okay. But it's all a structure. I don't fight you right here. No, we're not. Okay. But it's a structure. And I'm telling you, the deal is going to double. Give it three to five years. That deal will be doubled. What? What? Hit him, Fred. Because they just did a, a $40 billion deal. Now we're talking about a hundred and, uh, uh, $118 billion, billion. Fred, dollar deal? That. Fred, Do, don't that sound like it's doubled? Hit him, because he True. be with the bullshit. Hit him. No, it's OK. He'll, when, in two or three years, we'll have the same conversation. He'll say, F bro, you were on that shit. No, I, I do That's what I'm telling you. Because my people are on that <laughs> shit. When we were all playing, it was a $10 billion industry. Now it's 16 billion. Easy. Took a hit because of COVID-19, 2020. But 100%. You know, back then, Dre, what you signed? You know, eight, nine, ten million dollar deal. Yeah, you was making 10 million. It was 10 million dollars a yeah. year. Yeah, and you now, big dog at 10 million. Yeah, you big dog at 10 yeah. million. Larry Fitzgerald was the first one that went to 10. Okay, double digits, and then everybody else start coming after that. Now these dudes are making 20 mil. So 100%. That's what's supposed to happen because the business is getting bigger. I agree with you there. It's, it's more it's more the platforms. You know, you got Amazon Prime. You got Twitter shows the games. You can get the games anywhere. It's about sponsorship and ad money. And the more, uh, uh, the more outlets that you have that can show the game, the more revenues that are going to come into the NFL, and that's when the guys get their payday. I think ultimately at the end of the day for these guys to maintain their leverage, for them to be able to say, you know what, we're not going to take that bullshit. 
you got to have guaranteed contracts. But you also have to have guys in the position of the NFL PA boss, like Damari Smith, who would bash Goodell in public and go and have a private lunch with him. Who so, knows so what's going on behind said, those doors? Well, all I'm that, not bashing Goodell. You know, at the end of the day, what I'm saying is, I believe, I truly and sincerely believe that we have to have one of us in that position that understands what we go through on a nightly, on a daily basis. Not, um, let me miss practice, let, you know, scale down to practice, the padded days. That bullshit, we need guys to say, in 20 years, the business side. Well, you know what I'm saying? We need guys to look Goes back to this conversation before Chef came out. For that to happen, we got to be one. The NBA, there's unity. Why is it unity? Why is it so easy for them to do it? Listen. What's the word? Because, it's two because, words. Be, guaranteed what? No, it's not Say guaranteed. It with me. It's Spell not just it. guaranteed contracts. That's why they have there's the 16 power guys, simply because of the money. There's 16 guys in the locker room. Why don't you get it? I You're do not, understand it's not that. that hard. I do understand you know that. But Jesus. do you understand? Christ. But do you do you know what the guys? Why the less, do they have Do you the power? understand what, what do what do everybody else on the on the NBA uh, bench make? It's only a couple guys that's making money in the NBA. The money's what though? It's only a couple guys that's guaranteed. The money's what? There's only a couple guys. God damn, B is not guys. rocket science. There's only a couple guys. B, the last guy on the bench might make a million dollars, bro. Not every guy is guaranteed. It doesn't yes, matter. No, it's not. Every contract. No, it's not. Every no, it's is, not. Yes. no, it's not. Every contract. Those, those two way contracts and all that aren't. But B, if a dude is. Who the f- has a two way contract? B, if a dude's sitting on the NBA bench, he getting his bread. And we're not in the NFL. We're not. No, it's not. They're going to guarantee 53 contracts? No, it's not. You can't. And that's. The, it's funny. The number. That only, that is dudes that get injured and still get. Allen Houston was getting paid what? Like but we're 15? talking about the top dogs, though. That, we're talking about Allen Houston. I'm talking about the guy that's 16 on the bench, 15, right. 14. But if, he, if he's team, on the It ain't that many people on the team? Yes, there is. 16? There, yeah, there's, up, there's, there's, up, there's just 12 guys. What is it, 12 guys on a roster? 15, 15 roster 12, 15 roster. 15 and there's roster a couple spots. guys sitting there? Yeah, yes, there 15 roster. All of you guys are missing the point. When you look at the dynamics of the NFL. No, in, it's not the point. No, We're no. talking about guarantees. I, I get it, but why? It's not every guy. There's 53 guys that's on the NFL roster. So you're going to only guarantee and I'm talking the about the NBA. I'm the talking about the, the NBA. NBA. You're, you keep talking about guaranteed contracts. Not everybody in the NBA has a guaranteed contract. I'm talking to you about contract. why they had the leverage and power. Throw it's up. because of the guaranteed contract. No, no, no. Throw, throw that out. Throw that out for a second. That, that is leverage. And all the business is about leverage. No matter what brand of business you're doing, it's about leverage, right? Look at the NBA. Look at their star players, the player power. And then you look at the NFL. Who runs the business when it comes to players in the NFL? What position? Well, really, it should be the quarterback. It is the quarterback. It's not should be. And uh, up until the Mahomes, the the Watsons, the um, uh, Wilsons, Wilson, the Wilsons. Yeah. Up until these guys, the quarterback position was this. Let's call it spade a spade at the end of the day. These guys didn't go out there and vouch. They protected their ass. You know that. I know that. All of y'all know that. I love Tom. Tom ain't go out there and fight for you. Tom protected Tom. Drew didn't go out there and fight for you. I know. I don't want to make it a black or white issue. We're talking about what the team owners, and we've talked about this before. They're not inviting you in their house. They're inviting a the quarterback first. And that's who they trust and believe in. And that's who they're going to negotiate with. And those quarterbacks ain't going to look out for all the other 52 guys on the roster at the end of the day. Isn't that what the I NFL just said? NFL has a different dynamic. I mean, the NBA, there's a different dynamic. Those guys are fighting for each other because the majority of their league is black. And they gonna fight for each other. It ain't about it ain't about majority of their league, black and white. It's about it's about they come together. And what you ask me is, there's 16 guys or or is it 14 guys? 16 guys in the locker room. And the NFL is 53. It's harder to bring everybody together. Look at Colin Kaepernick, 2016. But they're not coming Colin together. Colin Kaepernick take a knee, and then all of a sudden we're talking about we're all in the locker room talking about what are we gonna do? Who's gonna take a knee? Who's gonna do this? Who's gonna do that? And then the NBA follow three months that. later, and everybody's that. doing the same thing. Let's That's the difference between the NFL down, and the NBA. The That's the difference. That's and, the I, difference. and I hate to put them, uh, I hate to them against us, but these are examples. The, NF, the NBA, when you look at those guys that are leading that league 
and what their what their right. um, they have the their, they have, what their commissioner their commissioner he gets it still so he gets it right these guys are leading their league the guys that are in the position of power in the NFL from the days that I play the days that you play and even now these guys they never said okay I'm gonna bring the other 52 with me I'm gonna look out for myself. The NFL has always, the, the union has always negotiated. You're saying yeah. everything I'm, I said, Fred. But right? that's what I'm trying to me. tell you. Like, what are you talking about? I, you're I'm saying everything I said. The NBA has their right of passage because of the players, their dynamic, their makeup. Drew, he had, a, they gave him money for him to come and talk and bullshit everybody. That's, so, that's everything I'm saying. That's what I said. You though. didn't make it black and white. I didn't hear it black and white. No, it ain't. It ain't. It ain't about that. It's about. It's no, about. I mean verbatim. I'm talking about no gray area. You didn't make it. You didn't make it clear. It was. I made it very clear. I said the power position. Power. Y'all, they're talking the power struggle. We talking in circles. We're talking in circles. Wake up. What's wrong with you? You know it's not gonna happen. As much as I love it too. First of all, y'all. First of all, I'll say this. First of all, you have to have a load of. With say, balls. First of all, I'm gonna say this. Oh, I'm a, first of all, I'm saying sorry, Dre. Sorry, Dre. Far, sorry, Dre. This is about to go real left. Sorry, Dre. First of all, y'all don't even know what the f y'all talking about because y'all talking about the NBA. Got everybody got guaranteed contracts and it's false. They do. Searching this. And I'm telling you, it's the they truth. Do. No, they don't. Not everybody that's on the NBA roster like have a guaranteed contract. There's two-way contracts. Not. There's there's two-way contracts, no, it's not. and then there's no, the no, top dogs. About. There's the top dogs. No, it's not. There's four guys on the NBA team that got guaranteed contracts, and everybody else can be cut today and don't got nothing. And don't have land dime. Look it up. 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 It's not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. So who has a better structure, the NBA or the NFL? Everything y'all saying is what I'm saying. It's now you finally got the Russell Wilsons of the world finally saying something. That's what the NBA did. Because it's easy for them to do that because they have smaller numbers. LeBron James ran, runs the NBA PA. Kobe Bryant was sitting out there. For us, we had kickers and we had long snappers running those meetings. In 2011, I was on every single call. I was on those calls. I was the player rep when you was on the team. My second year in Miami, I was the one on them calls with our long snapper, Denny. Jeff and I was John listening to that. Yeah. There wasn't no Tom Brady. There wasn't no, no Peyton Manning. You know why? It was long snappers. Why? So why is there no progression? You talking about 2011. You were because the now, 2020, why is there no progression? Okay, let me talk. 2016, 2016, 2016, I was the one in that locker room, OK? And everybody was still scared in the NFL. Everybody, do we take any what we do? Because the NFL institutionalized. That's what it is. It's institutionalized. We're scared to talk up. We're scared to freaking speak our mind. Now, because of 2020, everybody made it comfortable. Don't tell me about no entertainment business. Don't tell me about all that bullshit. The NFL is the one that's made everybody feel comfortable to finally talk about race, to talk about religion on TV. Colin Kaepernick was the one who took that knee and started that conversation. Everybody was scared. NBA had, a, had six month leeway. Everybody else in the locker room, like, what we do? And then all of a sudden, now you got the NBA come out and everybody wore a shirt for one day. They wore a shirt and it was gone. It was over with. So y'all keep talking about this, this big business. Yes, I get it. But it comes down to numbers. You keep saying that. Now all of a sudden, they got to talk about Russell Wilson. They got to talk about Deshaun Watson. Two people. College. Two people that are what? Franchise. Exactly. They can do that. They can do that. Russell Wilson can come out and take a knee. That's why everybody else was scared. Why didn't he? Because they understand the consequences and repercussions of not being able to provide. But why did he do it down? Why what, are they doing, are doing it four doing? years later? What? 2016 is when what? Colin Kaepernick took his knee. What? You know why, B. B Russell you know Wilson why. got paid already, right? Deshaun Watson got paid already, right? Now I can make my noise. Why? Because the money's power. You don't get it. You answered your own question. You named two people that have already gotten what? It's not because of money. They've they already, the they already gotten what? Pay. Wake up, man. It's, no, it's not. Oh, 2020. Yes, B, B. Dog, what do you keep saying B for? What do you keep saying 20? B. George Floyd had his knee, had somebody's knee on his neck. That's 
that's what made it comfortable. It's not because money. They've been getting money. The quarterback is Please, please, please. When you had $50 million, that's when you speak up. You got $50 million. A dude ain't got no bread. A dude ain't got no bread. Because he's trying to get money. They've been getting money. They've been getting money. No, he's trying to get that sack, B. He's trying to get the sack. People so speak up. Chad just said it. All right, answer Bro. this question. 2016, we ain't have money? Yes, we had money. So why didn't he speak up then? If I was still playing, why didn't they speak up then? I spoke him on the radio. I spoke up in I wanted to. Everybody he's talking about. 2016, because why they didn't we speak up then? Because they did not want to upset the old white owners but that paid But we talking about money. But we talking no. about money. A million dollars is not money. Two million dollars is not money. The people that speak up, look at B. Think about the people that speak up. Are the dudes that got hundred millions of dollars? If it's about money, why did why why are they talking about it now? This entire situation is money, bro. All right, shift it's again. money. The Damn. people that Damn. are fighting on Damn. Twitter, the people that the main on Twitter, be think about it, the main that are what's the word woke, woke. Everybody's woke. Those woke. If they're scared, people are scared to be woke as, as professional nobody, athletes nobody, because of the fact that they said, do not want to mess up. B, the gravy train. There are no, th there's no houses on Easy Street that are for sale. Do you agree with that? Do you agree with that? I don't agree with nothing you, you, you say. There's right no now. houses on Easy Street that's for sale, B. I don't agree with nothing B. you're saying right now. Are because y'all talking money about money. Over you talking about money. You talking about money, and people were signing big deals in 2016. So those same people, even in the NBA, that were signing those big deals and had money in 2016, they didn't say anything. So now we're four years later. Why are they now saying something? Because they've gotten all the money already. They gotten all the money. They got most of the, the oh, bulk of the money oh, so already. So what about what about the players the first that didn't three years, get? So now 2020. What's most what important? about all the players that didn't get money yet? So we can go, we can we can go on what and they on do? about all the players that didn't get money Ooh. that still feels comfortable taking the knee, that's still saying these all these things. I can give you Kenny, Kenny Stills. Kenny Stills. He yes, perfect. That's another example. Perfect example. Kenny Stills has not gotten a multi-year deal. So why since is he, he comfortable? Kneeling. He because he because wants to come out and he is the he's the minority. Because he's of comfortable. Players, because Kenny he's Stills is the minority of right. players. Hey, Tim, we're gonna change, we're gonna, we're gonna switch gears. Dre, what I want to ask you is, um, <laughs> I'm going to change this quick. All right, change so, it quick. Here we go. Changing the gears. Dre, uh, Texans have made a lot of moves. We, uh, back, to the Texans. we back on the Texans again? Yeah, we're on the Texas, man. <laughs> bro, the Texans is dead, bro. Go to the end <laughs> Talk about something else. Nah, Talk because I yeah. want to know what, in his opinion, what's the future of the Houston Texans? We already did that. No, did. Yeah, he ain't answered that part, but we did that. You, you I didn't answer that part. Oh, here we go. <laughs> in your opinion, what's the what's the future of the uh, uh, Houston Texans? It all depends on what Deshaun do. If Deshaun's gone. It, I don't think it looks good. Do you think they go instantly into rebuilding? You have no choice. You ain't got nothing. I mean, if you look at all the guys they signed, they all mostly on one-year deals, one- or two-year deals. You know, the guys they've signed in free agency. So um, we all know you're not successful if you don't have a quarterback. So if Deshaun's gone, then it's, it's, it's not going to – I just don't see nothing positive happening. How much of J.J. Watt's decision – do you think was based on the uncertainty of where what Deshaun's going to do? I don't know what him and Deshaun talked about. Um, I'm assuming they did have some, you know, conversations or whatever. But um, I think I think JJ is at a point where you know I've been me and JJ ha has talked a lot, and I think JJ is just at a point to where he's kind of. When I burnt out, maybe mentally, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, with the organization, um, and and I see like where JJ is at right now. That's where I was, you know what I'm saying. Like it, it comes a point to where you get burnt out with it, you know what I'm saying. I think now he just wants to move on and you know be somewhere different and you know see if he can win there. Dre, what's your dental schedule? <laughs> Cause I got, I done told a lot of people, bro, but I gotta let people know when their teeth are immaculate. And your <laughs>
<laughs> do you brush you brush twice, three times a day? Like, what what's your dental schedule? This man is crazy, man. <laughs> Bro, you see them? That's how we fell in love with Ocho. That was the question. <laughs> like, Ocho got pretty ones, and you, you got he, Ocho though. He though. might got Ocho, bro. He got Ocho. He got Ocho. <laughs> we had the real Tarzan on. He got some big, them big veneers. Them was gigantic. They were King Kong teeth. Your shit is proportionate to your face and everything, man. That's beautiful. Appreciate it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> We have people on, I always want to learn something. You know, you got Atlanta coming up, you got Houston coming up with the M Bar Lounge in Atlanta Midtown, and then the Rare Steakhouse in Houston. Acorn, Usher, you got Charles Hughes behind it. We talk about the NFL all the time. Like, I'm curious to, to, to learn, like, what you took from the NFL that now is helping you in business and with these ventures. Well, the crazy thing is, um... I actually met Charles through EJ, through Edrin. <laughs> Your boy. I was in, uh, I had been like going back and forth to Atlanta a lot. And Charles was just like, man, you know, come ride with me. So Charles owns a few, you know, restaurants, clubs and stuff in Atlanta. And Duval, baby. Yeah, <laughs> he mm -hmm. talking about you a lot. Charles, good people. And uh, so I just was, you know, moving around with him. And, you know, I saw, I was like, the same things he liked to do, I like to do. You know, I like to go to a little lounge, listen to some music, smoke a little hookah and stuff like that. And I'm like, I'm going to this man's spots and he's doing this, but he's making money at the same time and he's not really doing no work. You know what I'm saying? So I'm seeing the numbers and things like that. We, you know, we have that type of friendship to where he is, show me numbers and stuff like that. So I was just like, man, like, how can I be a part of that? And you know, he told me, say, you know, if I come across something that makes sense, you know, I'll let you know about it. And uh, Don Bowie, he's a chef. He he owns a taste restaurant in Houston. And he came across the spot and he showed us the idea. He actually showed Charles the idea first. And Charles called me and he was like, hey, man, you did you? He called me like two in the morning. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell Charles calling me for? And I pick up the phone. Like, he's like, man, you, you seen this video I sent to your phone? And I'm like... Nah, I'm like, bro, I'm asleep. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, man, go by this spot tomorrow. If you tell me it's a go, it's a go. So I went by the next day, met up with Chef Bowie and looked at the spot and, you know, it was just a go. Akon, you know, them came down, they checked it out and we just gonna roll with it, so. I love the collaboration, man. I know as players, right? When, when you sign your contract or when you sign with your agent first, right. that's the first thing that happens when you come out of college. And then eventually you get a you find a financial guy. Right. Some guys you know they're okay with tapping in with their family to handle their finances, all that different stuff. For, but for the majority of guys, they have a financial advisor right. that are getting points based on the type of investments they put you in. Right. And it's not always the player's best interest. Because a lot of times the, the financial advisors, they pad their own pockets by putting you in certain deals. That are, that are gonna pay them a lot more than you're gonna get in return. So I guess my question to you is, in finding your niche in terms of investment, you mentioned the deals with Charles, right? And those partnerships. Have you seen where you are more successful in doing business that way versus doing business with maybe a financial advisor or do you think you want to balance out the two, being able to have money over here, this type of investment, have money in stocks, mutual fund, retirement, savings, and real estate, so forth and so on. How do you weigh that? Uh, I think for me, um, I've been able to be successful on both sides. My financial advisor, she's going to help put me in the best situation to continue to make money and be successful. Um, with, with being with Charles and, and Akon and those guys is that Charles always told me I make football money, but I don't take no hits. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's what he said. So yeah. when you have somebody willing to put you in position and show you how 
to make continue to make football money after you finish your career, then because you don't find most people who, who who are in that situation, they're not putting another brother in position to make that money. You know right. what I'm saying? They're gonna get you to invest in the situation, but they ain't putting no skin in the game. Right. You know what I'm saying? Whereas in our situation, our thing is about team. You know what I'm saying? If your, if your team is strong, then everything's gonna be strong. Right, right, you know right, right. So that's just the way we 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 uh we go at things. You know what I'm saying? Anything I see or anything I may come across, I always call and be like, hey man, I saw this spot. You know what you think about it? I think you might want to come down and look at it. You know what I'm saying? And then when we go at it, it's not just one person going in. We gonna go in together. Right. You got you talking about. Charles, you, EJ, Akon, James, yeah. the whole crew. I love what you guys are doing with the dome. You know what I'm saying? So they, they built a real team. And I think when the younger guys understand that you can do business that way, right? where you minimize and mitigate the risk, I think at the end of the day, the profits are substantial, you know, and it's worth, you know, taking those type of shots. Yeah, I mean, because we're, we're in a position now where, you know, social media, internet, we have access to these conversations. We have access to more information. And guys want to know, guys are doing more, not just I'm making my money and I'm putting it into this portfolio that's going to bring back 5%. That was the thinking back then was I'm taking my money, I can't take any risk, 5% return. Now guys are doing more. They want to make investments. They want to be a little bit more aggressive. We're learning this thing about, you know, uh, venture capitalism, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I think you said something that guys can, like one thing that you said that everybody can take away is like your team is making sure that before you make those investments, because you can, there's opportunities for you to be a little bit more aggressive. You got to make sure your team is right and that you have the people around you that can, you know, dive yeah. deeper and pull back those layers and do their due diligence. That, that's the thing. I, I think a lot of times, like, Let's say if, you know, there was a investment, you know, was 500000 right? Instead of me going, putting the whole five in by myself, I'm going to come in and say, Shannon, you know, put 100 in, Chad, put 100 in. B, put 100 in, Fred, put 100 in. We all put 100 in, and we go at it that way. Whether, rather than you just taking that big risk, you know what I'm saying, by yourself. And I think, you know, like you say, when you have that team, you know, it, it, it's, it's just different because you, you have a lot of times, like you said, people scam you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Where they may tell you, hey, I got this idea, this, this, that, and the other. And you putting up, you know, a million dollars and they ain't put shit in it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, the million gone. You know what I'm saying? And, and I think a lot of times with athletes, that happen a lot. Like, you know, you see that happen with a lot of guys. And I, but quickly, but Dre, how do you figure that out? Because that's the thing a lot of, a lot of dudes going to deal with is where you got money and now you want to invest. How do you figure out the guys you can trust? We were talking about trust earlier. Right. The people you can trust, the people you can't trust. Like, how do you, how, how do you, how do you shift through the BS to get to the, to, to, the, to the good people? I think the thing about it is those guys, they don't really need shit from me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm around guys and I probably got the least amount of money. They going to do it. They going to do it even if I ain't involved in it. And and what you and what you just said, I just saw something where Tyreek Tyreek Hill said, "Look, I'm going to leave it up to my agent and my family. I just want to have fun." He said uh, the Chiefs offered to restructure his deal, but I don't want to get involved in that. I want to leave it to my agent and my family because it takes the fun away from me. Young man, young man, that's the wrong mindset. Mm. I hate to say it. No, I don't hate to say it. Tyreek, that's the wrong mindset. Get involved in your finances. Football is important, but not that important. Because you're one play away from being done. Do not put it in their hands. And that goes for all the young players. I say Tyreek because I just saw an interview where he just said that. Football is fun, but it ain't that fun when you're getting your ass beat up. And when you're on this side with us, retired, you'll learn more. That's my two cents. To end it up, free game. Telling people, telling guys, telling people, and everybody respects you. Everybody said it, they respect you. Bruh. Free game. What would you tell 
those young players that want to be you, the people that are working to be you, the guys in the league right now that are trying to chase your, chase your stats, free game, give them something. Who the X and who the Y? And then he know. Dre, talk free to game him. He know. The X and the Z. <laughs> the X and the Z. You the Y. I just would tell guys, um, you know, be, be, be involved in everything that you're doing. You know, don't leave it, you know, up to anybody to, to make decisions for you. At the end of the day, it's a kid's game. It's just a game. I, I, I've never understood why people say they feel pressure in, in, in a sports period, because at the end of the day, it's just a game. You know, keep doing what you've done to get you to the point that you're, you're at right now. And at the end of the day, it's all about work. Whatever you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. And quick, I got to go with you, Fred. You the X. You the X. You on one side. No, no, he's not who X. You wanna, who you want to Who you want to pull the coverage away from you? You got to pull. Oh, you oh, you got to like pick that. B or Ocho. On the opposite side, on the opposite we side. We don't get you. sensitive on this show. We don't start yelling and screaming on this show. We don't do that. We won't start yelling. You can break it down if you want to. We already know who the X is. Everybody we don't have to break down. He said nothing. he the X. He already the X. He already the X. Who gonna be on the other side? Who he wanna play with? He the GM. Who he wanna, no, who he the wanna, GM. Who, 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 which one of these two bitches can pull coverage away from What's you? Cause they gonna double team you, Dre. They gonna double team you, Dre. Who gonna pull coverage away Time from out. you? Time out. Can I say why this is not a good conversation? Because me and Dre is the same wide receiver. Uh oh. Oh, I now you scared. You scary. No, we are, are the, the route. Dre just faster than me. We the same wide receiver he's when it's, than you. you know what I'm saying? So, no, ain't no, well, I, I don't you. care about that, but we're the same wide receiver. So complimentary, we're talking about complimentary football. Of course, it's going to go with Ocho. That's my thinking. Everybody going to go with me. It don't matter who you are. You at. sound scary. You sound scary. No, no. We're talking about football. He the GM. He he sounds scary. Though. Why are you trying to change the question? Don't. Right. Hey, who are you taking as your X and your Z? I Period. Zip it, zip it, bro. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. Hold on. Let me say this. No, let me finish. They take it serious. Hey, listen. You can take every retired NFL receiver right now. For my era and era. Game on the line. Ask him the game I'm talking. On the line. Ask him the game Don't on the line. Don't try to change. This ain't fucking Madden. Anyway, listen. And you ask him, who do you want as your X or your Z out of me and B? You know who they're going to pick? They're going to pick me every time. It's one person that was like fucking birth control. 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm going to get the job done. The show is over. That was a good one, right? Hold on, wait, one? no, no, it's not over. It We're waiting on his answer. Oh, so, no, but the question is this. Y'all stop jockeying. Oh, Why are y'all campaigning? Let Dre pick. Because I'm not going to pick it right now. If y'all ask me that question, I'm not going to pick Dre. We're trying to rap. Rap, 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 rap. So game rap. on the line. Game on Why does the game have to be on the line? Do you, who's your ex, who's your Z? What the game on the line? He's the ex. Can he say he's the ex? He's the GM. He said he's oh, in draft day. In draft day. Who you picking? Could you take us out, bro? Wrap us up, please. Yeah, wrap us up, Drake. Please. X. <laughs> bro, they, you know what they want to ask? Who's the better damn receiver, Dre? Which one do you want? Let Dre let the GM speak. If you be go X, if you go X, Z, I'm a. Case <laughs> closed. He don't hurt me. He don't want to hurt me. <laughs> You ain't got to say no more. You saw the left hand, right? Then <laughs> <laughs> we get an answer, dog. Man, he's just a tussle, man. Drake, 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 let I got to go let me, home. Let me make you feel good, Drake. Let me make you feel good. Oh, it's OK, because right now, hey. everybody we ask, I'm up three to one. That's OK. <laughs> three to one. That's OK. If you want to go three to one. one. I'm up three, three to one. one. We asked three to one. Yeah. Who? We asked Everybody who? we asked. O Ocho ain't gonna block nobody, man. Who? I don't gotta block when I get there. Run him off. <laughs> okay. So, so blocking. Blocking? He ain't the run game. He ain't doing that. So I'm gonna put you play side. So you gonna put me back side? No, I'll put you play side so you can at least block for you. Cause you gonna block though. He gonna no. block you. You ain't block him. That's so disrespectful. You ain't block him. No. You he the blocking receiver. I'm saying, okay. I'm gonna put you play side. Man, stop like, trying to sugarcoat that shit. <laughs> you a block. <laughs> Ocho ain't blocking nobody. He ain't doing nothing. He ain't doing so nothing. Man. I would, that's why I would put him at X. Hey, you put him at X just for that reason. Listen, yeah, just for that reason. Hey, I'm he put you at X just to block. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the only reason I'll put you there. Other than that.
if, 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 it, if it was somebody else, you my ex. Yeah, 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 right, right, right. See? Because so he said I got to be the GM, right? Right, right. I got to right. be the GM, so I got to go off what I got. Listen, yeah, right, right. you hear him? Yeah, I hear him. That's a competent receiver that know his sh Okay, but here's what I'm saying to you. Right now, it's 3-2. Three, 3-2? Two. Three, two. Three, two. No, it's I'm not. I'm still up. In, in, my, in my podcast, in the show I just did, yeah. I said, you're my ex. <laughs> And oh, oh you heard what he said? Now I'm up 4 2. Why? Go ahead. What you say in your podcast? In, you in my did. offense. And what podcast you doing outside of I Am Athlete? Y'all, huh? y'all, no, no, no. I, it was what an interview. What you doing? <laughs> I'm on my, 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 my podcast. You got something to tell us? <laughs> nah. <laughs> you got, nah. <laughs> the five heartbeats. No. The, the, hey, I hey, ain't going nowhere. Hey, the podcast start taking off. People start acting <laughs> funny. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but uh, you reposted it. I said. Yeah, I just reposted out of love. I ain't listened to it. Correct. Okay. Oh, that's what. <laughs> I said Chad was my Z, okay. and you was my X. Yeah. I don't want to send you a motion. He, I can get more out of Chad in motion. Chad is, I think, in a box, he's more dynamic than you. OK, I, I can take that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Do I don't do motion. I don't do I'll motion. motion. I don't need motion. You know what motion is for? Motion for that can't get the off the goddamn press. You put me at the X. Motion to get you separation. Now you gotta, you gotta manipulate him. No, no disrespect. Darrell Reeves. I was never in motion. I was Darrell Reeves locked you up. Whoa. Locked you up. Whoa. Locked you up. Whoa. Locked you up. Whoa. Hey, show, show me a video. Show me a video of me locked up. Show me a video. Hey, hey. hey next episode, we bring in Reeves. <laughs> All that Ocho stuff, <laughs> you know, I, get choked out with I never got touched at the line. What are you talking about? I never got touched. Bro, he I told you. Monday Night Football. I never got touched at the line. Next show, next show. We need Reeves next show. I got Reeves' number. We can get him in here. Next show, please, 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 please. Can we cut? Show, show, cut. We had to fight to get a meal. Yeah, wrongfully accused. We had to fight to get a pill. That's why we right to get a deal. He on the team, he got to eat, you know? Spike, spike the skills. Fat. Keep it riding for the fam. You got to light the wooden wheels straight up. But in the past bad, work up in the trash bag. I'll pass a lot to take the test before I pass class. Yeah. And my family needed bread, I had to come correct That's why